It was an age of deep freezes and roaming megafauna. Modern humans had not yet evolved. And woolly rhinos, mammoths, mastodons and giant sloths still ruled the earth. Known informally as the Ice Age, the Pleistocene epoch was wildly different to the Holocene, our current geological period. Times have changed beyond recognition, but now Russian scientists have recovered a biological relic. And it appears to be a living link with a prehistoric past. Encompassing huge sections of continental Europe and Asia, Russia is the largest country in the world. From arid semi desert to sprawling steppes, coniferous forests to broadleaf forests, a diverse range of ecosystems lie within its borders. But above all, Russia is known for its harsh climate, especially at its northernmost latitudes, in Siberia and above the Arctic Circle, due to its long, cold, dark winters and its barren, uncultivable earth, Siberia, which encompasses some 77% of Russia's national territory is one of most sparsely populated places on the planet. Its geological landscape is the product of glacial erosion during the Pleistocene epoch. And its layers of ancient permafrost are today giving up secrets to 21st century researchers. Permafrost is ground or soil that has maintained a temperature at or below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, or 0 degrees Celsius, for at least two years. Permafrost tends to be found in the Arctic and Antarctic or at high elevations. In some parts of the world, including parts of Siberia, the permafrost is tens of thousands of years old. By excavating it, therefore, scientists can discern environmental conditions during the previous epoch. In fact, numerous Ice Age animals have been discovered in the Siberian permafrost, often perfectly preserved. In September 2017, a 50,000-year-old extinct lion cub was found near a river's banks in Yakutia, a Russian republic. The remains of two more lion cubs were found in 2015. And in 2018 a Pleistocene foal was recovered that was thought to be 40,000 years old. Meanwhile, the Ice Age worms extracted from the Siberian permafrost were in fact samples used in a study involving four Russian institutions, Moscow State University, Perstov White Sea Biological Station, the Higher School of Economics and the Institute of Physico-Chemical and Biological Problems of Soil Science. Princeton University's Department of Geosciences also contributed to the research. Approximately 300 ancient worms were removed from different sites in Siberia, transported to scientific facilities and carefully defrosted. Then, in what could be a major scientific discovery, two of the 300 appeared to start wriggling. After being defrosted, the nematodes showed signs of life, said a report quoted by the Siberian Times a website dedicated to news in the region. They started moving and eating. Nematodes, commonly known as roundworms, are extremely abundant and varied organisms. In fact, there are an estimated 40,000 species of nematodes, many of them parasitic. They are found all over the earth, often in highly inhospitable environments such as the ocean floor. They account for about 80% of all individual animals. Anatomically, they resemble narrow tubes with openings at either end. The two worms, which are both thought to be female, came from different locations in Siberia. One of them is approximately 32,000 years old and was extracted from a squirrel hole near the so-called Pleistocene Park, an experimental reconstruction of a woolly mammoth habitat. The other is approximately 41,700 years old and was discovered near the Elaza River. The nematodes were revived under controlled lab conditions at the Institute of Physico-Chemical and Biological Problems of Soil Science. After being stored at a temperature of minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit, they were placed in enrichment cultures in petri dishes and thawed to 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Several weeks passed and then the worms appear to reanimate. Our data demonstrate the ability of multicellular organisms to survive long-term, tens of thousands of years, cryobiosis under the conditions of natural cryoconservation, 
said the scientists in a public statement. It is obvious that this ability suggests that the Pleistocene nematodes have some adaptive mechanisms that may be of scientific and practical importance for the related fields of science, such as cryomedicine, cryobiology, and astrobiology. Furthermore, according to Byron Adams, a Brigham Young University scientist specialized in nematodes, the ancient worms may provide new evolutionary insights. After 40,000 years, we should expect to detect significant differences in evolutionary divergence between ancient and contemporary populations. He told Gizmodo, a gadgets and technology blog, in July 2018. However, he also urged caution, suggesting further work would be needed to conclusively verify the worm's ages. Likewise, Nematologist Robin Giblin Davis from the University of Florida believes that the sample may have been contaminated with modern roundworms. However, he also acknowledges the possibility of nematodes surviving thousands of years in the permafrost. If, protected from physical damage that would compromise their structural integrity during their frozen internment, he told Smithsonian Magazine in 2018. The nematodes should be able to revive upon thawing, rehydration. The nematodes are not the first ancient organisms to have been apparently reanimated after a long period of stasis. In 2000, for example, a group of scientists made the controversial and not entirely accepted announcement that they had reawakened 250 million year old bacteria. However, the Siberian nematodes are apparently the first multicellular organisms to survive an epoch in ice. Previously, nematodes were reanimated after a stasis of 39 years. Meanwhile, scientists have been warning about the dangers of ancient viruses and infectious bacteria lurking beneath the Siberian permafrost. Indeed, in 2014 and 2015 two scientists identified Pithovirus sibaricum and Malivirus sibaricum in a Pleistocene era sample of Siberian permafrost. Those specific viruses are only capable of infecting amoebas, but there may be others that pose definite health risks to humans. There are hints that Neanderthals and Denisovans could have settled in northern Siberia, and, were plagued by various viral diseases some of which we know, like smallpox, and some others that might have disappeared, Jean Michel Clavery from the Mediterranean Institute of Microbiology told the science magazine Scientific American in 2016. The fact that there might be an infection continuity between us and ancient hominins is fascinating, and might be worrying. Indeed, Thawing Siberian permafrost appears to have been responsible for an anthrax outbreak in 2016, which killed a 12-year-old boy and left 100 hospitalized. Some 2,300 reindeer also died. The anthrax spores, according to officials, were released from the permafrost into the water and soil, entering the food chain thereafter. Naturally, if temperatures in the region rise due to climate change, the risks of similar outbreak in the future increases. Indeed, Judith Marquard from Oxford University and Sergei Kirpoden from Tomsk State University have asserted that Western Siberia is now thawing due to climate change. Furthermore, in 2008, the American Geophysical Union observed exceptionally high methane levels in the Siberian Arctic, up to 100 times higher than normal. The gas which exists in frozen bogs and as so-called clathrate deposits on the seabed, is thought to have entered the atmosphere through holes in the thawing permafrost. In fact, the large-scale release of methane from the permafrost may be of greater existential concern than the release of ancient pathogens. Methane is in fact a greenhouse gas 22 times more powerful than carbon dioxide. And according to the so-called clathrate gun hypothesis, the mass release of methane clathrates could cause accelerated global warming of several degrees in one lifetime. Under such a scenario we might expect to experience sea level rises that wipe out low-lying islands and coastal communities, mass extinctions of plants and animals, increased incidents of catastrophic weather events such as floods and forest fires.
and severe disruption to food and water supplies. It is hard to know how the human race will fare in such catastrophic conditions. However, there is one group of organisms likely to easily weather the changes, nematodes, nature's great survivors. Thank you.